Welcome to Experiment 7, the nitration of methyl benzoate. Benzoate being an ester, it's the methyl ester benzoic acid. Acids become oates when their esters are. They don't know why, but that's the way we do it. So, our experiment, fairly straightforward and a little bit hazardous. You're dealing with concentrated acids, so we got to be careful while we do this. We have glassware that we need to set up, and the first thing we need is our 100 milliliter round bottom flask with a stir bar. Now, we're going to put methyl benzoate in here first. Um, and actually the best way to do that is take this to the fume hood and we're going to use the Eppendorf and put our methyl benzoate in the flask. I'll go do that now. So here you see a clear colorless liquid of methyl benzoate has a nice fruity smell, which is com which is very common for an ester. So we have our little cooling bath, which has nothing in it, which I better deal with. So our flask is clamped into place, and we're going to be adding the acid, but it'll vapor lock unless we have an opening for the uh, vapors to get outside. So we're going to use the Claisen head and our 125 mil set funnel dropping funnel in place here and we need to add slowly with cooling so I've got to go get some ice so here I have my little slushy baths drop down the stir plate and that goes there and we will resume stirring there now the sulfuric acid goes up here oh I just spilled some acid please wash this immediately okay that's all cleaned up now in the lab we always keep saturated bicarb solution. This is for acid and base burns. So if you do get a lot of acid on you, you quickly run over here to the sink and you wash, 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 and then you run back over here and you get the sodium bicarbonate and you splash that on some paper towel and then you hold that on your acid burn. So the saturated paper towel will take care of the acid burn. But it's got to be pretty severe before you do that. If you really have an acid spill all over yourself, you'll be going over there by the door and having a shower. Hope that doesn't happen. Okay, the sulfuric acid addition is now complete and we can see we've got the methyl benzoate stirring away there on ice with the sulfuric acid. I had to add it slowly otherwise the heat of the addition of the sulfuric acid would have burnt it and it would be black. If it's black, we know you added it too fast and we might ask you to start over. So now we can go to our nitric acid. So the nitric acid sulfuric acid mixture can be carefully added to the top. I don't want to spill this time because then I'll just have to clean up again. There we go. Put that down and you can see we will add this very slowly over the next 10 to 20 minutes. So our slow addition is continuing and we start to get some interesting color changes. We must go slow and we must keep it cool please. Now, we cleaned up, everything's been stirring away, it's warmed up to room temperature, and now it's time for the quenching. The powder funnel, the one with the big hole, is used, and 50 milliliters of ice water, mostly ice, and we just add that in there. Looks like I'm gonna need something to poke it in. So we keep stirring, and quench our reaction and our solid product should precipitate from the solution. Ah, 
had to stir this for a while to get the lumps all broken up, so I'm going to use my spatula to get the compound off the walls, and now I'm ready for my filtration. I have my suction flask clamped and the hose ready. I have my Buchner funnel with the holes, the holes covered up with the filter paper, the neoprene adapter in place and ready to go. A little bit of vacuum, I can hear it working, and I can ever so quickly pick up my flask, swirl, 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 and in we pour to wait a little bit. Didn't get it all, but I'm not too concerned. Suck this really dry, and I'm going to wash this with lots of water. It's just come out of acid, so we really do want to get the acid washed off here. There we go. We'll suck that dry for three to five minutes and then move on to the recrystallization. So that's what the product looks like at this stage on the funnel. No, it's a solid. We started with the liquid. Now we have a solid. So this is our first sign of success. Well done. Okay, time to deal with our recrystallization. The solid is uh, reasonably sucked dry here. And because, well, we're using methanol to recrystallize, so a little bit of moisture isn't a problem because methanol and water are miscible. So, get this out of here, onto my nice piece of paper, and I put a backstop on the paper, so when I pick it up, I won't spill everything, and I can just make a nice tube here, slide it into Erlenmeyer, there, 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer. And we'll start with 10 milliliters of methanol. And whenever you heat a flammable solvent, particularly when the boiling point is less than the boiling point of water, you use a water bath. That way, you're less likely to have a fire. So here we go into the hot water bath. That will just take a minute and hopefully will dissolve. <coughs> Otherwise, we'll have to add some more solvent. Okay, it took a minute, but here we are. The uh, product has dissolved nicely, so that's our nitromethyl benzoate. I'm just going to set that there for a moment. Perhaps we can watch the crystals grow. We'll see what happens here. Sometimes when it cools down to room temperature, the product has not yet come out of solution. But you start to swirl, and you can see a little bit of agitation nucleates the crystallization, and son of a gun, there she is. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a little cooling, put it in some ice water just for a few minutes, get nice and cold and have our wash solvent nice and cold and do a quick filtration and we're all done. Well, here, here we are 15-20 minutes later. <clears throat> Everything has come out of solution quite nicely and you have to give compounds time to crystallize so be patient and you'll get a better yield. Now on the filtration we try to keep things swirling and the whole idea is one smooth motion, in it goes. Don't waste any time here. Add a little bit of methanol to the cold flask. If anything, keep it cold. We'll do our wash. Looks pretty good. And we will suck this compound dry, 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 please, because we have to do a melting point shortly. And melting points work better on a cold comp on a dry compound. Okay, nice and dry. 
I have pre-weighed a little beaker. I've got a little piece of paper here. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Out comes my product. Out comes my product. There we go. Carefully slide into the pre-weighed beaker. Pop over to the balance. And I have a yield of 1.47 grams. Excellent. Time to clean up. We're just about done. Now, this is the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. It is critically important that you do your homework and know how to make the electrophile, what the electrophile is, and what its mechanism of attack is on the aromatic ring. Have fun and see you in the lab.